Hey y'all, listen. I am recording this video because I am just coming out of the gym and y'all know when I come out of the gym, I have a word. Um, you know, it's like spiritual training ground for me. Um, so first of all, guess what? Mindset Monday is back. Ah! Y'all, thank you for that break. It was truly needed. I feel refreshed. Um, I feel all the things, but we'll talk about that on Monday. Let me tell you this word real quick. All right, so y'all know um, one of the things that I'm on in this season is disarm the alarm. And um, disclaimer, because I know my mama gonna watch this video. Y'all y'all pray for me. I know I look scared, mama, okay? I just came from the gym, but I'm gonna deliver this word and it ain't gonna be pretty, okay? Y'all, my mama is the epitome of beauty and purpose, honey. She be like, your beauty has purpose. Why are you on there looking like that? She be so funny, but mama, I need you to excuse me today. All right, so y'all, disarm the alarm disarm the alarm and i know i have done a lot of videos on this um but listen it's important so just hear it for what it is okay so here's what i want to say really quick i was just uh oh okay sorry let me stop moving i was thinking about as i'm always trying to do to encourage you let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus right which basically comes through reading the word of God. As we read the word of God, as we study it, as we meditate it, it transforms our mind. It transforms us inside and out. You will not go beyond your mind. So just a really neat example, the Holy Spirit gave me and I want to share it with you. Those of us that have an alarm, you know, you have a stay, right? And then you have an alarm like for a way. So away is meant so that if anybody tries to enter, right, it activates. It's sending police, it's calling people. If you don't pick up, if you don't disarm it, if you don't give a passcode, they coming. They're they're assuming someone is trespassing. Okay. Um, stay is meant for when you going to sleep. It's you know, you could get up if you had to use the bathroom. It does not um the alarm won't go off. It's meant for when you're staying in the house. Now, what the Lord was just sharing with me was it would be crazy for you to know that it's Saturday. You're going to dwell in the house and, you know, you're going to just hang out and you put the alarm on away. That they're, they're, That's the functions are reversed, right? Because as soon as you move or open the door, the alarm is going to be continuously going off, right? People calling, they thinking you got robbed. In a sense, it would even be crazy to put it on stay, but you can. But you wouldn't put it on away and you're going to stay. You wouldn't put it on stay. You ain't going to even be able to go away. Why, what am I saying? Y'all, when we allow my husband coming, so he going to hear some of this word. I'm doing my little Saturday motivation. So hear me. Okay. So like I was saying, the alarms... Um, if it sounds funny, y'all, it's, it's going to the car, but you should still hear me. Okay. So, okay, you would not put the away alarm on if you're going to stay in the house, right? So, alarm away is made for when you go away. So, the reason I was saying that we have to understand when I say disarm the alarm, when Christ died... It, it talks about in scripture how he disarmed. He didn't just defeat Satan. He disarmed. Like, he disarmed him from any powers. It, it, the only authority he has, he had to ask permission. Like, literally, when I was thinking about this, the Lord was like, he rent. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not knocking any renters, but any, anybody knows, right? You want to own. That's what you, you want to do. That You want to capitalize. You want to be able, when you're renting, you're paying someone else. So though he has territory, and I say this often, don't minimize Satan. Because sometimes we passively be like, oh, Satan, don't fight Satan. And you're not equipped to fight Satan. He tried Jesus and listen, was defeated, but he still tried. So that means he'll try you. So number one, I don't want to minimize. He is minimized. But for those of you that are not equipped well in the word, he's a whole situation for you because you don't have any word in you, right? So you don't get into the ring to fight someone that you're not prepared for, right? Like I was not a fighter growing up. So you don't want me on your team of jumping people. We're going to get beat. 
okay because i didn't fight so i'm probably not going to be the one that you should call it's the same way if you don't know how to fight you don't get into fights with somebody that you don't okay y'all got that point so i want to that's always a disclaimer because he does have limited authority it, to do what he do best. Lie, deceit, discourage, uh, all of these that go with his name, right? All right. So with that said, going back to disarming the alarm, Christ disarmed him. He didn't just defeat him. He disarmed him like he has to get permission, okay? So when you understand that, just as crazy as it would be, to put on an alarm in your house it's saturday on a way you wouldn't do that because you're gonna just keep activating the alarm the people calling you every day they calling you all day you if you don't know the password the police come and you say oh i'm sorry right they have a particular function why am i hammering on that because when we don't know i'm always trying to go back listen this y'all y'all pre mindset monday I'm always going back to saying, let this mind be in you. Let is a choice. It is a choice to read God's word. It is a choice to study God's word. It is a choice to, to meditate on his word. It is a choice to take one verse and say it all week long. It's not about the quantity as it is the quality. It is a choice. And so we can decree and declare all day long. But the reality is, if you have not allowed the word of God to renew your mind by reading, by studying, by meditating on the word of God, you're not going to have an attitude of Christ. And so an alarm will always go off. Your past will define you. He will be able to use the, the tricks and the schemes and it will work on you. And your mind and everything about your your past will be an alarm. That he get to just, it's like literally you you trying to relax in your house and the alarm is on the way. And you steady getting up. Why would you do that? I mean, you ain't going nowhere. So why is the alarm on the way, right? Every time you move, it's going to activate it. That's what he wants to do. He wants to imprison you in your past he wants to prison you in that thing he wants to make what seems so he held you captive so every time something come you know it's an alarm disarm it you have the authority if christ be in you you can disarm the law he already did it so you got to know he gonna try you just put the code in the code is the word of god deep 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 it is written <laughs> go ahead what but see you if you don't know anything you can't disarm it right think about that naturally you make a mistake we've all done it and you you set off your alarm in the middle of the night or you wake up the next morning open the door oh shoot and you forget to put your code it's okay but when they call you you better know the passcode you have to tell them something or what's gonna happen the police coming because they ain't gonna fall they know you couldn't tell us anything so we think you trespassing. If you can't even tell, if you cannot be able to speak the word of God when the enemy is trespassing, he has illegal authority over your mind, over your children, over your marriage, over your household. And you can't even say anything. You just know he's supposed to be there. But you like, if I acknowledge God, when, when you acknowledge him in all your way, he, he laughing. He like, child, she don't even know the word. <laughs> Y'all keep going. I want to charge you that when I am posting on social media, when I am saying things, I don't get on here to just hear myself speak. I don't just get on here to say, oh, come on, read the Bible. Oh, come on. Y'all, it is the only way you are going to make it. And something blessed me. And this is the last thing that I want to share when I'm saying this on the alarm. I was reading on the armor of God and I love that this particular author said this. They said, when you read Ephesians 6, and it tells you to put on your armor, get dressed. It tells you how to get dressed and even tell you what to put off, take off. When it tells you how to get dressed, it talked about only one piece of that armor is war, is to actually, it, it, is, it is to actually go to war. Everything else is protective gear. There's only one that you fight with. Think about that. Everything else is so you can stand. It is protective. But there is one that you are supposed to war with, and it's the word of God. So if you, yes, love Jesus, and you are righteous now, and you gave your life to him, and so you have on your blessed praise of righteousness, that's great. 
but you don't know no word. You love Jesus. <laughs> That's really great. You have on a piece, your protective gear. Lord, my heart is to you. I want to serve you. That's great. But he tan you up and your sword ain't nowhere. You choose to believe everything God says. So you say. So you say you got on your shoes, but you can't walk therein in faith because your faith is even protective. The faith is what is shielding. So hear me. I really want to drill into you why you must read and study God's word. It is not for lazy people. My pastor used to say, um, serving God is not for lazy people. If you were going to church and expecting your pastor and Bible study to, to fill you and get you ready for what it is going to do is community. Church is community and honestly, it's ground to be able to strengthen each other. It shouldn't even be that you go to church to only get. You should go in the church ready to help someone. So church is not just going to the physical building. It's not just for you to get fully equipped. No, that's your word. You got to train. The same way you get up and go to the gym, right? You don't expect that because you ate the apple, the apple is supposed to like make your body. Like you got to do some work. You got to eat all day long. You have to go to the gym. You go get a physical. There are things that you must do to take care of your physical body. And it's the same spiritually. So if you're just expecting a Sunday service and a Wednesday Bible study to take care of your whole spiritual walk in Christ, really? Y'all do more than that on TV. Y'all watch TV consistently. Even if it's like that one show that you're going to watch every week for three hours, you do that consistently. You don't even do that for the word. You don't even read the word for three hours. One, once a week. But when he tearing you up, when he holding the fact that you you had a baby out of wedlock, when he holding the fact that you stole something, you went to prison, you now out. You can't get past those things because you have nothing to war with. The one thing that is your actual, your weapon to tear the devil up is the sword, is the word of God. So with that said, when we say let this mind be in you, that's a whole, that's your whole life. It's a choice. Every day you have to choose. And here's the thing. There's freedom in that. It's not religious activity. It's not, oh my God, I didn't read the word today. I'm not saying, no, it, get one scripture. Get one scripture. And, and here's the thing. If you had two scriptures a week that you focused on, if you had two scriptures a week times four weeks in a month, that's eight scriptures a month that you know by heart. You times that times 12. What is 8 times 12? 96? That's 96, babe. 8 times 12? That's 96 scriptures you know in a year. That's, you fight with that. I mean, I want to put it practical because the, re the reality is we're in different seasons of our life as well. You know what I'm saying? But for some of you, it's laziness. You're not even trying. It's like you just let the screen come tell you this the verse for the day and that's what you go no like really start somewhere what are you dealing with what are you warring with what are the struggles that you have be honest with that what is the battlefield in your mind where is what what are you not letting go or need help with just start there and go to your bible go to the back and just get there and then begin to read god's word and meditate on it but here's the bottom line if you want to be to be to grow in your faith, to grow in the word of God, to grow in your relationship with God, you must read the Bible. You cannot become like someone. You cannot have the mind like someone. You cannot allow Jesus to be your example and you don't know nothing about him. You don't even know why he came, died, resurrected. You you don't even know the authority that you have in him. So this is a wall that you must consistently build a habit to study God's word, to read God's word. Even if it's every day, you're just reading a little bit and then maybe one day a week you say, I'm going to give an hour and I'm right here with you. Like I have three kids, I homeschool, I have a business, I have a wife, like I can go on. I, I mean, we can go tick for tack of what we have to do in life, but I make it. I like running, but to be honest with you, I be wanting to run to music. I want to look at a movie. I have like a whole list of movies that I'm trying to get through. I haven't started any on the list. 
but I take my workout time to feed my spirit. Not nah, please, there is no judgment if you want to listen to the truth or anybody else. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that's what I have to do because I know what my next hours look like. And sometimes I don't. But I just want to encourage you, number one, just go on recap, disarm the alarm. It's already been disarmed. Don't allow the enemy, don't allow Satan to trick you with all his deeds, doubt, distraction, discouragement, delays. Come on, recognize, disarm it. Don't allow him to imprison you, not only in your mind, but under condemnation. It happened. You did it. You made a mistake. You didn't prioritize your time. You did just, okay, make a decision. Today is a new day with goodness and mercy following me. And I have a renewed mind. Now I'm going to say, Holy Spirit, show me how to manage the time that you've given me. Manage the money that you've given me. Manage the relationships you've given me. I'm not going to let, no, the Holy Spirit, he convicts and he converts sinners. He convicts you so you cannot do the same thing over and over. The devil is the one that condemns it. And see, and see, but you was just saying that you, that's, disarm that alarm. Do, 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 through the word of God. That was, so that's disarm the alarm. And number two, y'all know I'm always trying to give you my why. That's coming out too. My why the Bible. Y'all stay tuned for that. I don't know when, but it's coming. I always want you to know it's so important because we are in a time where everyone wants it easy. I like to say it like, um, and this is just the reality. My husband cooks better than me. Listen, I can cook. Now, now Thanksgiving food, I might give him a run for his money, but that's about it. But he can cook better than me. I be, We all be happy when he come home, right? Because everybody know we're going to eat good. Everybody. The kids, they, they like Jesus. I just don't like cooking. Here's the reality. I don't even like cooking. It doesn't make me happy. I don't put seasons together and see the smells and it bless me. None of that happens, okay? So maybe my cooking probably reflect that, right? <laughs> I don't cook mad, but I ain't, you know, savoring it, right? But it's something about when he cooks, it's like all the seasons and my son wants to come in and it's, it's all the things and he got to have, right? It's just a different mixture and you taste that. That's what it's like to taste the goodness of God. You can get a screenshot. You know, everything is instant now, right? But it's something about when you sit with God, when the word really, that thing get in you and you taste and see that the Lord is good. When you begin to reflect and remember who I was and then you look, the word begins to become alive and then it takes a different presence in your life and then you begin to walk different. That's different. Then the Bible sending you a screenshot and you look at that's a whole different relationship with the word. That's what I'm trying to get you to. When you really pursue and begin to read God's word and let it change you and just embrace it, it's like mm -mm, good. It's like good food that is prepared a certain way and seasoned a certain way. It it sits different in your tummy and the same in your spirit. Everything can't be quick. If you eat microwavable food all the time, disgusting. When you have really had a good meal, it's certain things like shrimp. I love shrimp. But he will tell you, I rarely order shrimp out. Nobody can like outcook my husband in shrimp. Period. Period. When I eat shrimp out, I automatically, I'm like, oh, they got so much bread over it. He don't cook like that. His shrimp is different. Anybody that had it tell you. So when I eat out, they do all this bread. It is like five thick. I can't, I can't, I can almost taste the flour. So I never order shrimp because I have a high standard for fried shrimp. <laughs> right? It's the same way. It's certain things I'm not accustomed to. You can't microwave certain things. And it should be the same way with the word. It your pastor teacher shouldn't be the same of when you sit in that thing and you like, ooh, ooh, this was good. You ought to have. Uh, oh, this word was good. The only time it blessed you was when the pastor said it. So, okay. That's my pre-mindset Monday. Mindset Monday is on Monday. Y'all excited? I'm excited. And look, I'm only four minutes over my time. Okay. So, y'all be blessed. I'll see you on Monday. That was it. Bye.